All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown. And uh, I cannot believe it's been so long since I've talked to you. Alessia Cara, how are you? And as I'm looking at you on Zoom, where where you be? I am actually at my friend Liv's house right now um, in her bedroom. Uh, we're just hanging out for the day, uh, doing some work stuff. So I'm, I'm here. She has like a nice big closet behind me it's a nice aesthetic. those are some nice looking closets you know yeah. uh, you know wow look at that who, who knew uh yeah hey uh when, when am i going to see you in person how when we're we gonna we got to work this out at some point you know i know i know i really miss hanging with you in person i hopefully soon let me just uh you know ask you officially uh because i describe my pandemic experience alessia cara uh as bizarre and i've even like during the height of the pandemic I've, I've described it as living in a sci-fi movie, like a zombie movie, but there's no yeah. zombies, you know? It's just, the, the zombies are invisible, it's crazy. Uh, how Describe your pandemic experience up in Canada. Man, I, very similar. I feel like it's, it feels, it felt very apocalyptic. Um, I have an apartment in the city, which is usually like crazy packed, you know, like just jam packed of people walking. And I remember just, and it was like winter time, and I remember just walking the streets that used to be full and it was completely empty. You could have seen like one of those little like uh, Western film, like uh, what are those tumbleweed called? Like the, things. Yeah, like the tumbleweeds. It, that's what it <laughs> felt like. It was so scary. It was so strange to, to have it feel so quiet in, in the city. You know, it's usually booming and it was like crazy. How close to normal is Canada at the moment? We're now allowed to eat uh, outside at patios, which is wonderful. And they lifted the travel restriction recently too. So um, usually like if I, we're allowed to leave Canada, but when we come back, we have to stay at a hotel and pay for it for three days and then also stay on lockdown for two weeks and they come and check on you. It's crazy. Oh, really? They yeah, knock, they knock like, on your door? Really? Uh -huh. Yeah, it feels like Azkaban <laughs> or something. If any, there's any Harry Potter fan, it feels like the prison of Azkaban. Just like so wow. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. They really do come and check too, unannounced. It's very uh, it's scary. Uh, album. Alessia, uh, talk about this. I know there's an album in the works. Yes. Everything, to my understanding, is super top secret, like James Bond status, all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> what, what can you say at this point? Um, well, I can say that I do have an album coming, which is great. Um, that's an exclusive for you. <laughs> there will be an album. Um, I, can, I can say that it will be around like fall-ish time. I, I can't say the date yet because I'll probably get in big trouble. But yeah, around fall time. Um, and I feel like it's some of the best work I've ever done. So I'm very excited about it. I hope that people feel the same way. Um, but I'm, I'm super, super genuinely excited for this. I'm like, I feel like it's the best work. You can't, I know you can't say the title of it, you know, but is there a title at this point or you're still debating? Um, I think I have the title. Yeah. I've, I've had this title early on. Um, and I was kind of going back and forth, but I feel like I've settled on the original title that I had in mind. But again, I can't say. I'll can I get? Can I guess what it is right now? But don't react to it. But I think the title should well, the uh, a, a title that should be considered, and we'll get into why I why I believe this later on, is insomnia. I Ooh. think that would be a cool <laughs> title because of some things you've said and whatnot. Well, yeah. Anyway, so mm -hmm. all right. Well, yeah, we're getting all this. I'm looking at her reactions. I can't tell whether that's it or not. Who knows? You released two songs, um, mm -hmm. and the the other one is Shapeshifter, which you wrote. And here's I guess here's the question I'm getting to. You wrote Shapeshifter with your idol, Amy Winehouse's producer in the house where she wrote a ton of her music. Mm -hmm. uh, that's got to be super cool, surreal, you know, uh, uh, crazy. I don't know what, walk me through what that whole thing, how, how was that? It was uh, insane. It was so, it felt like one of those full circle moments for me in my life, just because growing up, I adored Amy. I still do. And like, I would always look at the credits on the album booklets and see Salam's name and, um, you know, finally getting to work with him just felt so wonderful. And like, I had been waiting for it for so long. So, and I mean, you could just so feel her energy there too, in the, in the house in which she wrote all of her music. It's Salam's house, but I mean, you could just feel it. You could feel the stories, you could feel the history there. And it, it felt like a privilege to, to be there for sure. Do you have a couple of tracks on the uh, upcoming album that could, like you could hear Amy Winehouse's voice on that kind of like you channeled her in a way? Um, I think Shapeshifter, definitely. Sonically, because I wrote it with Salam, like you could hear the influence there um, and his production on Amy's songs and on this one. And I, I just feel like her soul was, is, is just kind of like sprinkled throughout it. I don't know. I was very inspired. So it, it definitely uh, felt, felt like she could, she could be on this song for sure.
Uh, Alessi, I love crazy fan encounters. I don't know if you've had a crazy fan encounter lately because, you know, all the lockdown and whatnot, but, or, or have you, have you had any, you know, crazy, you know, weird selfie moments in the last couple of months? Um, not really, to be honest. I feel like I haven't really taken many photos of people just because of pandemic. It's hard to, to get close to people or to have people even recognize me because of my mask. So it's, I haven't had too many recently. I kind of miss uh, that. Do you, what, do you enjoy them? I mean, the mask is what it is. It does, it serves its purpose, but it, I guess in a way, will you miss the mask because it gives you a little bit of privacy, you know, that you probably don't get on a regular is the mask, you know, do you enjoy the mask? I guess in that sense. Um, yeah, you know, but it's actually, it's been helpful on that. end when I try to, you know, get around the city and try to be super private, if I'm, you know, not feeling the best or something, it's nice to have that because people don't really recognize me if my hair is up or the mask is on. <laughs> it's it's like I can get by anonymously, which is kind of cool. Um, but obviously, I mean, what the mask entails and what it means is not the best thing. So I hope that we get rid of them soon. So we could all go back to normal. But uh, it is it is selfishly helpful for that reason. How much do you miss live audience live fan reactions all that oh my god so much I, like it, that's like some of my favorite parts of what I do is like just playing the songs live for people and, and meeting the people who listen to my music and doing shows and traveling like that's that's the best part of it so it just sucks that that was taken you know so so abruptly I, I definitely won't ever take it for granted ever again no doubt this is why I think your album uh should you should you should consider insomnia as the title you uh, mentioned that you were forced to confront your insomnia over pandemic i want you to talk about that you know and kind of what you mean by that and then that well that's why i think it's what insomnia sounds like a great title i mean that is kind of a cool title maybe i should change it, <laughs> think, think it over. But, but yeah. yeah what do you what do you uh yeah talk about how you really had to confront this insomnia um yeah so I, I mean i've always dealt with insomnia like pretty much my whole life i know it's extremely common but me personally i've just always had trouble falling asleep since I was very young. I would have to go to like psychiatrists and do different things since I was a kid. But I guess in the last year, that just kind of escalated times a thousand just because of the anxiety surrounding the world and the whole situation. I think my stress levels just skyrocketed and I lost even more sleep than ever. And I was just like, I found, my, found myself being up like till like 8 a.m. like till the sun no. would rise and it would be yeah I just would not get any sleep and it got to the point where it was so frustrating that I had to sort of purge those emotions and like get them out of my system so I wrote this song one night um, where it was like 4 55 so almost 5 a.m. still wasn't sleeping and I just took my phone out and did what I usually do when I'm stressed and just wrote this song in one sitting and here it is it's just about this one night of like just being so delirious and confused and frustrated with myself that I couldn't sleep and, you know, recounting all the events of this one, one night. I was talking to one of the guys of um, Imagine Dragons. I forget mm. what you remember told me, but he said he, he was talking about his insomnia and he was up for days on end at one point. It was like, I, could, I, I didn't even believe that a person could stay up as long as he, I'm not going to quote the number because it might, I just, it's just insane. And I can't even, I can't believe it's true. But uh, he would stay up so long, I didn't think it was humanly possible for someone to be up that long. Wild story, you should look into that one. Have you tried yeah. melatonin? Because I, I tried melatonin, but it gave me crazy dreams, like mm -hmm. nightmares. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you tried melatonin? Um, I have tried melatonin, yes. And um, it, it worked for like a second. And then I think, I don't know if my body got used to it or something, it just stopped. I tried melatonin, magnesium, a bunch of different things. I'm now on a medication um, for my anxiety and it also helps me with sleep thank god but it does give me crazy dreams like every night i have a dream now and they feel so vivid that i'm starting to forget like what is real and what is a dream it's, it's crazy wild. it's yeah. so wild anybody looking to get on melatonin uh before war because it was like the exorcist was in my head i was like what oh, is no. giving me it was, it was so yours was like nightmares like scary yes. stuff oh, i mean not gosh. every time i took it but uh I, to the point where i was like all right this has got to be and i look it up and it's a thing so anyway uh oh man alessia we've talked about this track let's just jump into it sweet dream uh what else this is the radio she released two tracks uh this is one of the two it is the radio single um what what else do people need to know about sweet dream well what else do people need to know well i think um, this, I mean, I always feel like the first song that people hear or songs that people hear off of a project should be a representation of, you know, the stories that are to come in a way. So this song is a representation, representation, excuse me, of the first kind of half of the album, which talks a lot about like 
um, feeling really lost and stuck and confused. And a lot of the emotional stress and turmoil turmoil that I had to go through the first half of this year and that we all kind of had to go through. So um, it kind of speaks for the first half of, of this record. And uh, I, I wrote it over the course of one night of being just really frustrated with my insomnia. And uh, I actually wrote it in bed beside my best friend because she was sleeping with me, um, uh, staying at my apartment one night because I was like, I was too anxious to be alone. So I had her sleep with me in bed and she was, she has like no problem sleeping. So she was passed out beside me. And I was like writing it while whispering. Cause I didn't want to wake her up. So I, I whisper wrote this entire song <laughs> over the course of one night. So there you go. A little this, fun fact. This is the one you wrote at 4 55 AM. This is, this is it, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, along with being a performer, you're a fan. Uh, what is the best live show you have ever seen? I mean, it just rocked you in the best way possible. Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. Um, wow, I've seen so many great shows. I think the best one though would have to be when I saw Coldplay. Um, I was lucky enough to open for them, which is wild. So I got to see them play multiple times. And this one particular show at Wembley was like unforgettable. I mean, their show was amazing every night, but this one particular show with the crowd and the way that they just performed that night was like the most beautiful show I've ever seen. I, it was like, so emotional and wonderful and they're just such great performers that band it's, it was like the best show ever have you kept in touch with those guys since uh, your tour with them um yeah i've seen chris martin one other time since then um at like an event and it was it was he's just the best like he's always been so so nice to me they've all been so kind to me um so yeah i've, I've kept in touch with them and some people from that team from their, you know, behind the scenes as well, which is, which is really nice. Yeah. I just talked to uh, Chris and Johnny not too long ago and uh, they're just the funniest guys on the, Oh yeah. Planet. Those guys they're are the funniest. They're just so, a... so funny. <laughs> uh, Alessia talking about your shows, your performances, Uh two part question, one part you're going to love one part, maybe not so much. Uh, <laughs> what is your personal, what do you consider your personal best performance? I mean, everything went right. Then the complete flip of that, what do you consider your worst? Everything went straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Okay, well, the best one, man, there's so many great ones, not on my end, meaning like the audience, but I, I guess I played a show on the Shawn Mendes tour in Portugal, in Lisbon, which was crazy. Like, I don't think I've ever heard an audience that loud. And like, I feel like the band sounded awesome. My voice was like doing well that day. It was like such a good show. I, I always remember that show. And, and also this other show in Montreal that I played on my second tour. Um, we were all just like crying by the end of it because it was just such a powerful show. And then the worst one I've ever played was probably might have been big week it was either big weekend one of the festivals in england i think it was big weekend the one where you wear your wellies like the wellington shoes i can't remember i think it was big weekend um but it was like one of those shows that just everything went wrong like we forgot all of our like our equipment didn't make it so and it was like 20 minutes before the show and we had to run to other bands at this festival to ask them to borrow like their instruments because all of our instruments didn't come in so we were using all borrowed instruments the tracks kept stopping like and and then I forgot the words like I messed up like so everything was wrong there was like a period where no sound was working so I had to like tell jokes on stage it was <laughs> awful it was just awful just one of those shows and it was like such a huge deal too so that one was probably it was insane it was I think, awful I think I might uh, need some melatonin after that night I mean, for, yeah for real, right? <laughs> tell me about it Alessia you may not know this about me but I am a uh, uh, I'm obsessed with the paranormal ghost UFOs, everything in between. I've got a podcast called Paranormalish. I am off the deep end. You have had, to my understanding, uh, we were talking off air, uh, uh, some sort of a paranormal encounter. Mm -hmm. What do we, what is this famous Christmas situation? <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you this. First of all, it's crazy that you're obsessed with it because I'm terrified of anything paranormal. I don't know how you can immerse yourself in it for too long, but I'll <laughs> tell you the story. It sounds like a fake story, but I promise it's real, especially because it's around Christmas time. It sounds like a fake like Christmas tale, but I swear it's true. My mom can vouch for this. So, and I don't even know if this is paranormal, but I, I think it was because this is what happened. So it was me and my mom. I was maybe like nine or 10 years old, maybe even younger. And it was me and my mom at home. No one else was home. It was like a stormy winter day. And we get a knock at the door, right? So my mom's like, oh, that's odd. Like it was like 
storming so hard. So we're like, who could it possibly be at the door? We didn't, weren't expecting company. So my mom like peeks through the, the little like uh, blinds and she sees this woman who looks like so in distress and we've never seen her before. Um, and we live like on a small street and we kind of know everybody. So we've never seen this woman. And she, my mom opens the door and she was, and this lady was like, hi, um, I, uh, you know, I just need some money for the bus. I live on this house. And she said the house number and our street name. So she says, I just live down the street, a couple houses down, um, at this house number, I just need like $2, just $2 for the bus. And my mom was like, okay. And like, I don't know. And something about this lady was like odd, but my mom just like, you know, gave her a toonie where we have these like, things called toonies in Canada. It's like a $2 uh, coin. So my mom gave it to her and the lady was like, thank you so much. Like, God bless you. And she, and my mom closed the door and we looked at each other cause something felt odd. So as she was walking away, we like peeked through the blinds again um, to see where she was going. Cause she gave us this house number that we, that wasn't familiar to us. And as soon as we like looked through the blind, she like turned around at us as if she knew that we were staring and a gust of like snow and wind just like rushed down and we couldn't see where she was going and by the time the, the wind and the snow stopped she literally was gone and this isn't even the whole this isn't even the, the weirdest part she like was vanished and we tried to look outside to see where she went no idea where she was which fine okay she could have walked really fast whatever then a couple weeks later after christmas we get another knock at the door we open the door no one's there it's just this little envelope on our like on the ground on our welcome mat and we open it and it's this like little like Bible verse or like a, like a little quote, like talking about kindness. And there's the $2, like the toonie attached um, to the card. And it says like from the woman from blank, like the street number and the house number. So we're like, what the heck? So me and my mom get in the car. Cause we're like, we need to find this house. And we go drive up to where the house number would be. So let's say she said like 34 or something. We look at the house numbers and, and like, the house numbers like skip each other right and we get to the end and there's no such thing as that house number like and like that street like that house doesn't exist <laughs> so we're like <laughs> and to this day like she just like we don't know who this woman is where she went I've never seen her again this house doesn't like she just gave us a house number that doesn't exist and it was like this this quote on the card that said like you know be kind to others or something like it was the strangest thing and she returned the two dollars and we have never seen her again. The house doesn't exist. She like vanished in the snow. I have no idea. What the heck? You have, <laughs> Who this woman is? Have you uh, any neighbors? I'm not sure how close neighbors live in your in your neighborhood, but any neighbors? Have you do you chat with them? And have they had a similar experience? No, you know? no one has ever. We've like told this story everywhere because, and we've never seen her to this day. And she just something in her face, like she had these like blue eyes, and was just like, and I don't even know how she even knew that we were looking at her because she as we peeked through the thing, she turned around at us and then all this snow came and she vanished. That and then her house doesn't exist. Like, why would she give us a fake house? I don't know if it's paranormal. Maybe she's just a lady, but it's still the weirdest story that's ever happened. It's so strange. I that don't. Is, that's, yeah, that's bizarre and amazing. And all, yeah, all, I, I, I would love to do some research on that area and see if there's a, a an urban legend around that. I don't know, if mm -hmm. that, who knows, but Alessia, you are on a uh, Metallica tribute album. Yes. What the heck? Give me some details. I mean, she covered, uh, I think it was uh, Inner Sandman. Mm -hmm. Alec is doing this uh, tribute. Uh, like it's, it's for the Black Album, one of their famous albums. What, what can you say about this? Um, well, I can say that I um, made this cover or this tribute with this amazing girl band from um, Mexico. They're these young girls around my age, some younger than me. And they're, they're like so cool. They're like they play all their own stuff they write all their own stuff and so we collaborated together they're playing on the track and singing on the track as well and um it was just so cool to collaborate with other girls especially like on a on a rock song I feel like you don't there's not a lot of female representation in the rock world which is it's so great that I, I got to collab with these awesome artists and um yeah we just we just did this cover and I'm, I'm like so excited about it it's so out of my wheelhouse in the best way so it was a fun experiment so I hope I uh that we did the song justice because it's such a legendary song and band. have you met the guys of uh, Metallica no the pandemic has like ruined everything on this time because it would have been lovely to like meet with them or like work with them in person but we we never actually had the chance to meet so you mentioned this we talked about this in a previous interview years ago uh do you still write down everything good that happens in during the year and you at one point you, you wrote these things down you put it in a jar 
And then at the end of the year, you would take the things out. Like these are the, some good things that happened throughout. The, do you still do that? And if so, what did you do in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that jar is going to be empty, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, no, I haven't done the jar specifically in a while. I should do that more. Like, cause then I feel like it would make me actively participate in it more. I, I do it um, in my journal sometimes. I'll write like five good things of that day. And then I'll go back and look at it um, like a couple months later or a year later. But I would love to do the jar again. Um, but I mean, what did I do in 2020? I don't even know what the good things that happened. I, I guess I wrote a, I wrote an album and finished it There's pretty that. much in 2020. So that's kind of cool. That'd that's be the, the only, only thing, good thing. Yeah. The only thing in the jar. I went, wrote album. There you are. Right. Yes. <laughs> Alessia Cara is uh, hanging out. Uh, here's another question that you told me a while back. Um, you told me that when you write a song that is about someone, you like to give them the courtesy of letting them know like, Hey, look out this song is about even though if you don't put their name in it you know obviously um this song is about you do you still give them the courtesy of letting them know what's about to uh happen or do you just write it and let it let it go um i still i still do that um unless i'm like not in contact with that person anymore and it's like weird to contact them then no um but i always do i, I always like either let them hear it first or like just like give them a heads up just because i mean i choose to put my life out there. And while like, I don't write to like expose people, they don't really choose to have their business out there. So unless they're like, you know, really mean to me or like deserve it, then I, I always like be like, hey, heads up, this is coming out. Is this cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look out. yeah. <laughs> that, that has come, your conversation, and I've brought your name up on multiple interviews and multiple countdowns about the fact that you do that. And we've had debates on, do you need to do that? And I, I guess I, you know, as much as I appreciate the fact that you've given someone the heads up, I think it's sort of, uh, especially if you're dating someone or anything like that, it, you, it, it's an assumed risk if you're, you know, going out with an artist that you're going to end up on a song. That's kind of what you do, but I think it's still kind that you do it, but I don't think you have to. That's my opinion. You know. Yeah, it's true. I think now I, I realize like if the person doesn't deserve that or if they were like, it depends on how things like left off or what I'm writing about. If it's someone that like hurt my feelings or like did something not so nice, then, then I'll write them. about it. Yeah, then yeah. I just, you know, because I, I never do, I never make songs to expose people. I'm not like exposing their life. I just kind of talk about my feelings. But if it's about someone that I love or like, you know, someone that respects me and that I respect, um, I always just am like, hey, Heads up, you know, I try to do that regardless, but you're right. I don't have to. And I, I, I don't do it all the time anymore. Alessia Cara is hanging out. Uh, of course, she's got two tracks out, Sweet Dream and Shapeshifter. Uh, new album out later this year. Uh, the title, I, the, well, the title I've suggested is uh, Insomnia. I have no <laughs> idea what the title is. It's not Insomnia, to my understanding. But uh, <laughs> no. look out for the album. Uh, videos, the video uh, for Sweet. Talk about the video. I forgot to ask that. Uh, no worries. Well, the video is uh, really fun and uh, kind of like strange and, and colorful. I think we wanted to really represent the delirium of, you know, being up so long and like what that feels like and what that looks like. Um, so it's like super colorful and my hair is all up and staticky and it's, it's very dreamlike. There's a lot of things that don't make sense in this video um, just to represent being like so exhausted that you're doing things that don't even make sense. Um, but it's really, really fun. Um, these two lovely women, uh, Olivia and Carrie, they're a duo called Tusk. They directed it. Um, and yeah, so we, we came up with the concept together and they're, they're wonderful. They brought it to life. It looks awesome. You guys check the video, look out for the, the album, of course. Alessia, it is so good to see you. Oh, I can't wait to see you in person. I hope you're well. Congrats on everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know. I feel like it's been so long. I can't wait to come visit you properly. We can like hang out in person and be nice. We'll do it up good. At the end of every countdown, Alessia Cara, fist bump to make it official. Can you tap the cam? Yes. Boom. Our first virtual fist bump. 